Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is the DJ Roundtable Show. And if you're watching us live on Twitch, thank you so much for watching and having fun. If you have any questions, comments, or anything, please put it down in the chat. We're more than glad to answer like we always do in the chat. And always make sure that you follow everyone here on all their social media. Uh, we have a few DJs not here tonight because they are out gigging and working. So uh, that is, they got to make money to pay their bills. And also make sure that you follow us also over on YouTube. If you have not done so right now, if you're on YouTube, do me a favor. Go down, smash the like button, click the subscribe button, and make sure you check the bell icon because we do repeat this onto YouTube on Mondays and get that up there for you guys to enjoy. If you're watching on YouTube, please don't be afraid to ask questions or say anything. Um, I always love questions and we're going to start our question off tonight from YouTube. But I, again, I want to thank everyone here for coming in tonight and make sure everyone's here all safe and warm. And we got a lot of great things and including our on the, I guess say on the floor reporter with you, right, Matt? You're mm -hmm. on the floor there at uh, NAM. Get a little information about NAM. Ask you know, about a few things there. I know you went and saw a bunch of different booths and saw some cool stuff. And uh, we'll keep that real quick because I know everyone is talking about NAM. This is not a NAM show because everyone's talking about what we'll, we'll cover NAM real quickly. Uh, Matt, really quickly on NAM because you are in SoCal and you know you can go there within what two hours, three hours, twenty minutes. 20 minutes? Oh, you're being closer. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, with traffic in California, you know, you never know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but the couple of things for there, when you went into NAM and stuff like that, you were we were talking about before the show about the uh companies that are very, very small companies that are manufacturers based in China and them having products and showcasing their products. Are they in the main floor or are they in a separate area from the, the big boys like Pioneer and EV and JBL and RCF and so forth? They're kind of mixed around. Uh, most of them are towards the back half of each hall. Um, but what it was before when NAM was like the big, big, big show, like they used to have all four halls fully filled out. And then all of the Chinese manufacturers would be in an underground hall. Uh, called Hall E. This year, Hall E was used for storage and badge registration, badge pickup. So there was no Hall E. It hasn't been there since 2020. Um, so they kind of were just spread around. There wasn't like a ton of them uh, in terms of like audio and lighting. Um, I don't think there was really any Chinese lighting companies. Uh, I think it was all like Chinese audio and uh, instruments and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, it's kind of mixed throughout. They're not they're they're not as much of a presence as it used to be. So when you go there and you, you look at all the different manufacturers, what would be the three items if you could go there and buy them right there and then off the floor? What are three things that caught your eye? You're like, hey, I need to have this it is on my wish list to buy. Uh uh I'm gonna make it four because I can't leave out one of them, but um, the Meyer X40 speakers uh, from Meyer Sound, which is a company up in Berkeley. Um, best sounding, clearest sounding top speakers I've ever heard. They sounded phenomenal. Um, my buddy's a Meyer dealer um, and he preaches Meyer. So he's looking to, I'm probably going to get a pair of those, but they're like 11 grand for a pair. So uh, that's dealer price too. So maybe in the summer, um, but those sounded great. Um, so those, uh, if I wanted my like big boy column setup to get even bigger, uh, EAW makes what they call an AC6. It's adaptive column, um, adaptive column speaker, 145 or 146 max SPL. The thing's a monster. I mean, it's so loud, but it is crystal clear when it's loud. Um, and it has the coolest part is instead of like, you know, how far do you want it to throw? It'll you dial in how far the front row is how high up the speaker is and how far the back of the wall of the room is. And it uses its internal DSP and processing to calculate how best to adjust the speaker to sound. So that was the second one. That one's like 14 grand per unit. So uh, we're not talking money an issue here, uh, but 
The so those two. Uh, number three would be Jamaz makes Astera knockoffs now that legitimately look like Asteras. They have the same filter on the front, um, the same deep, rich colors uh, that look great on camera. So um, those are coming out in March, uh, is according to the guy. They were three grand for a set of six, I want to say. So it's not that much cheaper than Astera. It's a little bit cheaper, but uh, so that'd be three. And then the fourth would be There's a company called Alcons Audio. They're out of uh, the Netherlands and they make studio reference monitors. Uh, they make speakers too, but they're studio reference monitors. Uh, they infuse them with hemp. So it has, I guess hemp has like nice acoustic properties and best like cleanest, most perfect sound I heard all show was from their setup that had uh, two low reference and then two like, like mid to high cabinets with a sub in them. And just when they played this one song, like, I mean, the reaction in the room was just it, most perfect sound I've ever heard. So um, those are my four. Okay. I don't care about controllers or any of that stuff. Like I, I, I will say, well, we'll honorable mention to the Hercules T7. I did get to play with that. That controller was everywhere at NAMM. Uh, it is a lot of fun. So I have my rain four, but I haven't, I just installed Serato and I'm going to play around with it, but I think I might just get that Hercules instead because it's literally a step up from the controller I use now, but with stem separation, dedicated stems, buttons, and all the other fun stuff. So, so uh, that one's an honorable mention. One other question for you also with um, walking around, I, I'm sure you saw how busy the booths were. What, were your, what booth would you say was the busiest of the brands that we deal with? Would you say Pioneer was the busiest? Um, I, I mean, Pioneer always, was the busiest. Pioneer is always the busiest, um, just because it's also a huge booth. It's like a, I want to say it's like a forty by forty space, and they've got twenty seven, twenty eight controllers just out. So Pioneer is always busy. Um, I would say like the Hercules booth is always busy because they always have like good DJs scratching there and doing demos. Um, I don't know who else was like super busy. Um, yeah, probably just that. I mean, those, those were the constant traffic jams were those two, uh, Ernie ball, which is a guitar manufacturer. They had a, anytime there was an artist, like people just spilled out into the, uh, general area. But I think like highly trafficked, I mean, always pioneer, they always have, excuse me, like a premium space too, that you have to pass by. So, um, yeah, probably that, um, opening day was the busiest Thursday, obviously, uh, Friday was, also busy but sunday was like dead sunday was great because i actually got to like have all the manufacturers demo like dubstep tracks and demo what i wanted to hear on their systems instead of the crappy a lot of them use really crappy demo songs that like nobody like it It just it's poor like who well, cares about i'm sure they're trying to cast as wide as net possible and playing stuff that it, they feel it's, cast it's, as that a white of, net a lot of them don't know their market like rcf is finally understanding that a majority of their buyers are DJs, like wedding DJs. And so that's why they're making all of their lines in white. And that's why um, they're, but like all their demo songs, none of them were hip hop or EDM. They were all just like rock songs or vocals. And yeah, that sounds good. But like, we want to hear some bump and stuff. Like, <laughs> know your audience, I think. I, I don't know. Well, it's that's the thing is that RCF, you know, again, they're Italian speaker manufacturer their clientele is, you know, was primarily Europe. They, you know, they dipped their toe in the United States and they've become heavier and heavier into the United States. So it's one of the things, you know, it takes time and giving positive feedback, say, Hey, you know, you got any of this or any of that. They take note of that and they go back and say, Hey, I mean, next year we need to have more of this, a little bit of that. It's like anything else, you know, again, they're, they're, it doesn't mean they're right or wrong. It's just the way they say, Hey, we think this is the best way of doing it. And also the last thing at, uh, I got to ask you one last question about uh, Nam yes. before we move on. Uh, did you stop and get any of the snacks there, any food? And how was it? Uh, at the show? Yeah. Uh, I got like stuff from a food truck, but I'm not really known for the food. <laughs> the Anaheim Convention Center food is pretty. Ah, oh, see, that's yeah. the thing is that I'm sure everyone's asking. They go there. Is there uh good stuff? No, food. Food is not their their forte. Well, it's a convention center, so I'm would not, I would say, I'd probably say it's like like going to a ballpark or any place like that. It's concession food. So, mm -hmm. but as always, uh, Jeff, 
I know you did not go to NAM, but I'm sure you saw some stuff on NAM. Is there anything that you saw at NAM that cut your eye that you want to add to your list of stuff that you might get in the not too distant future? Uh, not a lot. I may at some point upgrade my um, ceremony speaker. Uh, what caught my eye was the uh, Pioneer product, uh, the eight inch, uh, and the, the separate control uh, mixer for it. That was uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, but I'll have to listen to it before I hear it. Uh, the price is also very high. It's a little bit out, out of my range for what for what I want to uh, uh, pay for. You know, just a small ceremony speaker. Um, but it's nice to see that, you know, what is coming, what they're capable of doing. That's one thing that I, I think that Pioneer is, is, uh, it is pretty good at. I mean, you know, they're innovative and uh, they, they bring some stuff, you know, to the table every year. So it was interesting to see that. And uh, even though it's alpha theta, you know, technically, but same umbrella, I guess, correct. But uh, that, that caught my eye more than anything. Um, you know, the battery powered controller, it's kind of cool and all, but you know, for what you're spending on that, um, yeah, I don't think you would. I would ever use it as a uh, just a ceremony, you know, a controller or something where you would need a battery. But but yeah, for me, it would. Yeah, I would probably look at. You know, I'm probably going to upgrade at some point during 2024 to a uh, a, a decent battery uh, or a bigger battery powered speaker than what I have now. And that's the thing is, I know uh, EV also dropped their Everse 12, the 12 inch battery operated speaker too. So the, the, the technology is coming out now for the self contained speakers. And, you know, EV and Pioneer are the ones that right now leading the charge. And it'll be interesting if RCF or even Meyer Sound comes out with something like that. Maybe, you know, we don't sure. know what they're doing. Uh, it's, you know, Meyer but, would never. You know it, it's whatever, whoever does stuff. It'll be interesting to listen to that stuff and listen to who has the best. And, you know, there was a lot of great uh, DJ um, uh, forums out there. You could read some stuff. And also, uh, I know next year, uh, this year they had it. And I know next year it'll have now the Pioneer is the uh, speaker shootout out in uh, Boston um, when they have, uh, they do that in uh, December. Uh, and that's pretty cool when they do that. That's their uh, DJ um basically the DJ fun of time out there. Uh, the harvest of sound, uh, they actually bring all these speakers in and they play a song and they just switch between the speakers. So you hear the same song just between different manufacturers. So you get a kind of an idea of, Hey, this is an RCF. Hey, this is a JBL. Hey, this is a QSC. Hey, and it lets you make a decision of what you feel it's best for you. And, you know, it, it's great to also see that a lot of this new product coming out. And I know, uh, with 2020 it happened and everything like that it pushed a lot of things back with supply chains and i'm glad to see a lot of manufacturers come up with some cool stuff including uh matt you said um you said who was coming out with uh sticks that look like uh asteras uh jmaz jmaz they also have uh they had a bunch of really cool lights also if you're watching this go watch my nam video it's three and a half hours but uh there's plenty of demos there's time stamps. oh you're giving yourself a thumbs up too yeah, was, uh, did you guys see the little thumbs up come up? <laughs> did I? Uh -huh. Oops. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, you, you have your you have your gestures on self promotion. He gave you a thumbs up. Gave yourself a self promotion uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. <laughs> How'd you do that? <laughs> I, I don't know. I I don't know this. Software. Yeah, you got to turn it off. It's 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 hand gestures. You have it on in the in the app for <laughs> for Zoom. Any, oh, there it is. Uh, anyway. <laughs> It's the fun so, stuff with live TV here, folks. <laughs> um, what well, was cool? Yeah, so yeah, I don't know. So Jame adds with a lot of cool lights. Yeah, so they had um, they had some really cool like LED table lamp looking things that you would put at like a comedy club, um, like and then they're wireless battery powered DMX too, so you can like have all these table lights strobing and do some really cool stuff. So I don't know who their supplier is, like who I don't. I used to think they just knocked off Chinese products and made them down in Mexico, but I don't think so. Cause like their stuff is so unique now that like they, they had a battery powered mover and it took China almost six months before they copied that. Um, and then they also have like a four in one infinite rotating moving head type of beam light that, um, 
is very cool. They all, they had a really cool lighting show. Um, their demo was really always a, a showstopper, but uh, yeah, they had some cool stuff. Well, cool. So um, uh, Dwayne, I know you've been also looking too at stuff and what Nam, what Nam went through and all the videos and stuff you see put up from all the different manufacturers and, you know, uh, Pioneer had their video and all the other uh, manufacturers had their video on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. Uh, when you're going through that and perusing all that information, is there stuff that you saw that you're like, huh, I'd, 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 I'd get more information on that. Or I want to hear that. I want to see that. Uh, no, I haven't really looked at any, but um, I have, I, I um, bought a quest. So I'm into the, all that virtual reality thing. And I think tribe had a um, table there or they were talking about having something there. So I've been doing a lot of that virtual kind of stuff messing around with that and um look at the different ways you can dj through there so that intrigued me so that's where where i've been at for the last couple of weeks i think that would be cool you just walk into a gig put a pair of glasses on you see the room and obviously you start grabbing music out of the air you see your playlist just grab it put it down have virtual turntables to mix and everything that and then send out the music That'd be cool. A virtual, you know, crossfader, virtual volume controls and EQs. That'd yeah, because be a couple cool. of times I I just was playing around, like sure. just you know, learning the program, and I opened this room, and next thing you know, there was people standing there. So it's virtually you get an audience. So that's kind of cool and eerie at the same time. Well, the real people paying real money. That's the thing. Is that you know that would be a great thing to have. You know. Uh, kind of like uh, here on Twitch or on YouTube, uh, have an audience waiting for you to come in and put a pair of goggles on and you go in and you DJ a gig. And then when you're done, you leave and you're basically never left your home. Uh, mm -hmm. And that would be really, really cool to do. Uh, but uh, nothing that uh, that caught your eye from uh, from there, from uh, from Nam right now. Uh, no, I got kind of like hold on to my money. <laughs> That's yeah. perfectly understandable. But I mean, I am still looking at, still thinking about some kind of visual, like a TV, a flat screen TV. I don't know if I, if I want to do the big one in front of my booth, or I've seen where people had like two smaller ones on a on a side. So I'm still debating on that. I've seen people do that with like two, like thirty two inch TVs on, um, the totems from um uh from rockville they have uh uh they have an adapter you can put on there a tv neat side and like a 32 inch which is you know an okay size tv it's not huge but you're not carrying a lot and you can get a bag from gator that has two slots for two tvs or like two 43 inch tvs mm. you know those are a little bit bigger um i know jeff and i were jeff was talking before uh he has a 55 inch i have a 50 inch that i put in front of my booth and I don't know about you, Jeff, but I always am afraid of when I see the kids come walking up, especially the little kids who love seeing the screen and put their fingerprints on their hand. And are, <laughs> I'm just hoping they don't smack it hard enough to crack the the screen because, you know, even though they're not outrageously expensive, you can go to Walmart or Costco or Target and get one fairly inexpensively. It's still, I don't want it to put out, you know, $300 out every single gig because it's a throwaway item and you have to, you know, pay for recycling. So um, bad enough, I do have... Uh, keep uh, a lot of uh, cleaner as well as a uh, microfiber cloth to clean that front screen because fingerprints happen very, very quickly. And uh, it's always fun uh, seeing that stuff. So uh, we got some stuff in the chat here. Uh, DJ Bradley, he is in the chat and uh, he is at a gig, you know, like we said before, he's making some money tonight. Uh, hopefully it's a great gig and it's going good for him. Uh, DJ Mikey Mike is from the northeastern Pennsylvania area. He is here, DJ Adrian E. And uh, Mikey Mike said he just got his E-verse 12. I know he is, uh, I believe he is E-verse 8. Uh, he's been enjoying them. And uh, he was uh, telling me earlier that uh, he's got some gigs coming up for 2025 already that uh, he's going to be using those, uh, those uh, speakers for them. So uh, DJ Aga on youtube um put up a uh a question basically um watching all the youtube videos on new gear in 2024 makes me want to go buy new speakers 
Uh, this has got me thinking. I use EV and Maggie, and there's nothing wrong with my sound system. Uh, what's ever his opinion by buying new DJ gear is an addiction. Sometimes I look around on Amazon or go to the guitar center and buy DJ gear that is nice, but I have not uh by not have a, I have not have a need to use it. Um I get I got to start using more self-control as my light turns off. Uh turn on. There we go. Um I gotta start using some more self-control. So is it a addiction to go buy gear or are you ahead of the curb or are you spending money unwisely and just spending money to spend money? So I'm gonna go to Matt who uh is a, a person who loves buying uh, gear. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Is it a uh, kind of an addiction to go buy gear, or is it uh, something that you uh, look at it as part of the business? I think I buy gear because I'm constantly improving my setup. I want to be the best. I want to have the best sounding sound system. I want to have the loudest, the heaviest bass, and just like the best look, like the best that I can provide. So, uh, that's why I do it. Like I'm never going to be satisfied. I don't think maybe once I get those Meyer speakers, I'll be, I'll be set. But like there, there's a, there's a, a point to where consumer grade ends and you're not going to get anything better until you jump up to that premium commercial grade gear. Um, so I think that's like, if you're just buying, like buying to buy, it's not going to get you anywhere. But I think if you're like trying to elevate your setup to bring that like professional level sound to a consumer level gig, like that's, I mean, that's the ultimate goal. I don't know. Maybe that's, that's part of it. Whenever you get a second, come back to me on the NAM stuff. I had some other points that I wanted to touch on. Okay. So Dwayne, but, do you I think mean, it's yes. an addiction? Go around buying gear? I think it's, you addiction. think it's, you know, prudent. <laughs> I, I think though, I, I only buy stuff that I have a use case for. So I wouldn't go out and say, oh, I need this for one gig. But like, if it's like, oh, well, I need, I have two single 18s, but I'd rather just bring one dual 18 and put it under the table in the middle for my gigs. And that would be a lot more convenient and it would sound better because running two single 18s under each top on the sides is going to give you some weird cancellations in the front and just doesn't sound as good. So there's always a use case. Same thing with my lighting. Like I don't just buy lights um, to buy them. I like to figure out how I'm going to DMX them and integrate them in my setup before I purchase them. So if any light that I'm considering buying, I will look up the DMX manual and say to myself, like, how can I put this into my setup and program it easily enough and effectively enough to where it'll work with all my other lights? Of, uh, of course. So that's me. And Dwayne, what about you? What do you think of going and buying gear? You think it's a good thing to go buy gear? You think it's, you should hold off? Only buy what you did? No, it depends. You have to be responsible. So I remember going through that phase once I got a job and started getting money. I was into keyboards. So every time I step into Sam Ash or Guitar Center, because just like with the NAM thing, something new came out and I thought, okay, if I got this piece of gear, it'll make me a better player or it can do this as opposed to getting something and actually learning how to use it. And then if you outgrow that, then if you get something, I think that's good as opposed to going buying something and, you, can, you know, because it has the newest belts and whistles because a lot of times when you finally get that bells and whistle, there'll be something that's better than that, that's better than that. Each year, everything evolves. So it's it's a matter of if you spending wisely and have a purpose for it and actually use it to its fullest till you can't, you know, you outgrow it, then I wouldn't call that an addiction. But if you're just buying something just to buy the next thing, chasing a fad, then eventually the price, you know, the money thing will catch up with you. Yeah, and that's the thing. You have to kind of watch what you spend sometimes, but uh, it's always fun spending the money, though, you know? <laughs> yeah, if you have it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, got it. You, you just burn a hole in your pocket. That's, that's the question. No, uh, no interest, no credit payment plans. Pay as you go. Those are dangerous. Yeah, uh -huh. they, they can be. And uh, Jeff, what about you? What do you think about buying gear? 
Uh, you know, you get to a certain point with your gear and you just got to be happy with it because I mean, if you, if you pay attention to, you know, what every manufacturer, you know, sends out to their, uh, influencers, you know, it's every six months, every year, there's something new. It grabs your attention. It's a new toy. I got to have it. What can I do? I always got an extra button that I could do so much with, you know, it's like, yeah, you just got to bring yourself back. You look at Eddie Van Halen, he played one guitar the, almost his entire career. You know, and, you know, he could have, he could have, yeah, let's sure, let's get a bigger guitar, better guitar. Let's do this. And no, I'm going to master this guitar. You know, that was his thinking process. And he did. And, you know, I think a lot of DJs need to master the gear that they own, just like Dwayne said, you know, mastering your, uh, your piece of equipment that's here in front of it. And, you know, just get used to it, uh, learn it. And don't buy anything until you've outgrown it. I think that is the main thing. If you once you've outgrown it, then absolutely purchase something. And I don't think you need to be, um, you know. And I've fallen for it. I've fallen for uh, the the manufacturers putting new gear out and like, look what I can do with this, you know. And uh, you know, it happens. It's just like new cars, you know. Everybody. I mean, it's it's how the it's how they stay in business. They get new people to uh, buy new gear every year, and uh, I get it. Um, but you got to be happy with some point with what your rig is doing for you. If there's a if there's a hole in your rig that uh, is a spot that needs to be updated, your lighting, or maybe it's your how you dress your cords. You know, uh, it might be your your um your furniture if you're using furniture that might need to be updated uh, if you're just using a table you know a six foot table yeah that might need to be updated but um it's it, it, i don't think that people need to upgrade uh just for the addictive reason of it so that's just my thinking well i feel there's a difference between upgrading and updating and you know upgrading you know again like you said having something old worn out after so much time I look at you know, like your main stuff you want to replace roughly every five years. Replace your controller after five years, you know, speakers, you know, about five years to five to eight years because technology changes, stuff wears out, and you can still sell it for you know a decent dollar. I see some of these guys, some DJs, and I'm not mentioning names, but I've seen them at uh, you know gigs with speakers are twenty and thirty years old, and. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, if you got them in perfect condition, they're great. But what about the drivers? Have you replaced the drivers? Have you upgraded drivers? Have you upgraded crossovers? Have you upgraded the amp? If you're still using technology from 20 years ago. It makes me question, like, okay, how good is sound quality? It can still sound decent, but is you really giving your customer what they wanted? You know, and I've seen a couple of DJs still with halogen lights. You know, to come with halogen pars with gels on there, and it's like. Yeah, LED technology is way better because you don't have to worry about stuff cooling down and you can have more than just, you know, four or five colors. You can have almost infinite colors when you start getting into the Asteras and uh, Ape Labs and stuff like that. You know, it's it's amazing what you could do with lighting these days, especially LEDs. And that's that's the other question is that you, you need to look at upgrading, yes, and updating, yes. But yeah, you know, the other thing the I'd like to add is is uh, is having multiple setups. You know, I've got multiple speakers for multiple reasons. You know, I've got a um, my large system that I take to uh, you know proms, homecomings. You know, with seven hundred, you know, thousand kids, and I've got stuff that I can bring. You know, for a small intimate wedding, so it's good to have uh, versatility in your setup, um, and that means more gear, um, but. I don't think I need to update that right now. So I'm, I, I get it. You're, you're I, I see right the now. new stuff and I want to go buy it, but I'm like, I, just, I don't need it. I don't have to. There, have there's, it. there's, we need and want. And that's the, that's the thing you always yeah. get. You got, you got to kind of measure out. Do I need it or do I want it? And you can yeah. want some stuff. Okay, fine. Great. But do you really need it? And that's the thing is that you want to take the money that you make. You do want to reinvest a certain amount of money into your business. And it, again, it can be as simple as, you know, hiding cables better, uh, better, Table manager, better table, better this, better scrims, better skirts, you know, stuff for uh, wedding shows, you know, brochures and so forth, so on. Having the right look, you know, if you're doing photo booth, having the right photo booth equipment, um, you know, making that time for things and making sure stuff looks nice. And I know, Dwayne, I, I've seen some video with you doing stuff and uh, your setups. And again, your setups are nice and clean. It looks great. Uh, what, do, what do we say 
would be your big secret for keeping everything looking nice and neat? What would you say is your big secret? Um, I have these little clips. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the name of it. I want to say it begins with a G. It's like these little clips that clip Gravity. on the pole. Yeah. Gravity I clips. use those. Um, also, if I have like from coming to my sub, out my um, controller, I usually have like three cores put together and I like um, put the, uh, what do you call it? The zip ties kind of things on there. And try to do that. And then also I have like um this strip where you can put wires underneath. That kind of stuff. Or just plain out, just use the gaffer tape, tape it down. But I try to like basically just try to from wherever they come out of, the um cores come out of the uh, outlets. I just try to like tie those down and keep it like so it's like one long cord. And then try to put everything close as possible together so it can kind of like hide it but behind my booth it's a totally different thing <laughs> well yeah the, the people don't you know they're not coming behind your booth and you know it, it's always it's, it's what the front presents and what you present it's kind of like a um a hollywood facade when you look go look at like a um as on a studio lot and they have these outer buildings built and they have a whole neighborhood it looks like these houses and you open the door up and they may have like the first room, but then it's open up to nothing. And it's just a you know plain basic room. When you walk into the store, into the house or store or whatever, through that door, you walk, it's they you switch to a stage. So you're on a stage, not in that building. And but you have that facade that looks great. And it's it's a it's kind of a fake facade. And that's one of the things that you know, having that great look is always nice. And uh I want to go to uh, DJ Salsa's. Also has some really great looking uh, setups. Uh, what is your secret for hiding cables and hiding all the little things around um, your setup? Uh, so I use zip ties. Um, uh, they're much better. Well, not much. So a lot of my cables are a little thicker and um, I run a few cables to each speaker sometimes. So I like zip ties. I use Karoka brand. They were 140 pound rated. Um, they're monster zip ties, super strong, and they just make your setup look clean. So I've got both, uh, clear zip ties for when I use my white setup. And then I have, uh, black zip ties for when I'm using like a, a black setup. And, um, I just try to keep the cords nice. I do try to make my behind my booth look good. Well, maybe not that, but I always use a tablecloth and I make sure it covers like completely behind where I'm at. So that if someone were to come up from behind, they don't see a mess of cables. And then um, I really don't like all my cables hanging down the side. So I got these cable wraps that are like the, the ones you use for a desk, but you just put it around and zip it straight up. So I'm going to try those and see how those work out because I'd rather just have one little thing coming down off the side instead of a bunch of random cables. Just because I think, uh, yeah, nobody's really going to see it from behind, but some people do. And a lot of times at venues, like I'm not completely against a wall, so people might look sideways and see what's on my uh behind the facade so that's what i do okay jeff what about you what did uh what, what little tricks or tips you want to give to hide stuff i use a lot of uh velcro uh velcro ties for all my gear uh for anything for every cord has a velcro tie on it but that's mostly to store it uh in use um I've got the um, the pedestrian cable covers. You can get them at like, um, you know, office supply stores or home improvement stores. And they're just basically rubber and they come in like six foot lengths. I've got uh, two six footers and I've cut a couple down to like uh, two footers, uh, three each or three out of the six feet. Use those in between like um, uh, in my, my booth and the speaker. You know, I've got an area like that and... Uh, so I put one of those down to basically cover the cover the cords. You got power and uh, you've got audio running underneath it. So uh, it, it it just really dresses it up, and it's really super easy and quick. You turn it upside down, and you just stick the uh, the cords in there, and then flip it back over. Um, and I have found to actually the slit on the back where you put the cords in. I took a uh, an exacto and just ripped it all the way down to make it from like that wide to like that wide. So ah. it's a lot quicker. 
Okay. It's a lot quicker. Before I'd have to like poke it in an inch at a time, you know, and now I just lay it in there and flip it over. And it's so great. Um, that's my, those are, those are the key things that I use for, uh, for, you know, cable management around the booth, uh, underneath the booth, you know, I, I do have a mess, uh, try to keep it coiled as much as possible. Um, and you know, it, it is what it is. I mean, you can't hide that stuff sometimes, uh, especially if you have an open back booth like I do. Um, but I've got lights under there too which kind of dresses it up to some degree, but it also illuminates it. So, you know, you got, you got that going for you. Um, that's about it. Um, you know, just uh, up on top of my booth is just uh, keep it coordinated and knowing where everything is. Always keep my phone in one area where I know where that is. My GoPro remote, I keep that in a certain area so I know where to reach for it. Um, water or, or Gatorade or whatever I'm drinking uh, in a certain area. So, you know, those things uh, always have a, have a home and a place. And, and then the only other thing that's an, uh, an option is if I'm doing a wedding, I'll have to have, you know, my uh, rundown for the evening uh, on printed out, printed on paper usually, and, uh, you know, have that uh, around the booth somewhere where I can get to it really quick. And that's, you know, that's, that's a lot of great information. I actually use the, uh, the cable ties, the Velcro table cable ties, uh, not just for storage, but also for wrapping things. I have white and black um, to wrap onto th uh, poles and so forth, and so on. Cause you, you always want to make sure stuff is nice and tidy and zip ties are nice, but they're one time use. And you got to cut them. The Velcro ones you can use over and over again. And after a while they get ratty rotor, toss them by another one. So they're cheap. Uh, I know Mike is saying that he uses uh gator clips for his scrims Gator clips for uh, lights. Uh, the gator clips were expensive, but are, are reusable. Um, I got a, I got the conversion. Uh, late is someone here getting the Hercules T7? Uh, I think Matt is talking about getting the T7. That'll transition us to my NAM coverage. Uh, couple, just a couple of things I wanted to talk about from nam um yeah the t7 was was a hit um it does have kind of an issue that cleveland terry had talked about on his channel and i was like hmm, i wonder if that's an actual thing some of the second level uh of the the, um, the performance pads sometimes like they don't activate right away so you have to press shift and and press the button to activate like um uh loop roll and it doesn't activate right away. So um, I don't know if that's maybe a defect with some of the early production units or what, but it happened on one of them at the show, but not on the other. So, so I don't know. Mike, Mike is saying said there is an upgrade to it. So it must be an upgrade or update to the firmware or software. Yeah, yeah. That's probably that'll probably because um, that was the only issue. But um other than that, um I went to every speaker demo, uh, every company that was there. Um, most impressive was probably Base Boss. They just, I mean, they had a wall of subwoofers. And when they unleashed those, like combining them, just insane bass. I mean, to where it was like pounding your chest. And they knocked some ceiling tiles loose. Uh, part of the wall was caving in, like legitimately destroyed the room. Uh, but it was... I went there four times, four different demos, and it just kept getting better and better and louder and louder. And uh, I live for that. So their, their subs by themselves aren't all that impressive. Um, like their dual 18 and their dual 21 by itself, I think RCF easily outperforms it. Uh, but once they started stacking stuff and doing the quad 21s and then the dual 21s on top and then the single 18s and the dual 18, I mean, it just uh activating all that it, it was just nuts um their speaker their main speakers are insanely loud uh they don't sound super good um they sound all right i think compared to other stuff they uh are a little on the harsher side uh but the thing about bass boss is they don't do any processing so like what you hear is what you get a lot of other speaker companies it's going through a processing rig and an engineer's tuning it you know so uh it's a little different but Base Boss was a lot of fun. Um, I might consider getting one, but I don't think so. Uh, RCF's demo room, as I mentioned, that the audio was uh, the tracks that they selected were a little lackluster, and it also wasn't very loud. I don't think they were trying to like blow the roof off, um, but it did sound good. The new 
uh nxl 14 is like the upgrade to the tt uh 515 that sounded pretty good um out of all their mains though the art 915 i think sounded the best uh, which is a plastic box and it's um their lower art series so that one i really liked uh they're coming out with everything in white as i mentioned for wedding djs subwoofers and speakers uh certain lines first on the nx and then they're going to do it to the art series too they said um after that uh oh uh dnb audio technic had a really cool soundscape experience whereas they have like 50 or 60 speakers all throughout and did like a really cool trippy video um to demonstrate that so they got a lot of really fun tech um there was eaw as i mentioned had the ac6s i heard those last year and they were insane they're, this year they're just as insane Especially when you hear the the sad part, of my video, the only song that got flagged and blocked was ACDC, uh, Back in Black. And um, so you won't hear that in my demo on my YouTube video, but it sounded just amazing. Just amazing. Um, nothing new from LD Systems. They have no game plan or any inclination to make a G3 of the 44s. Um, the guy told me it's not coming out. They don't have it in the works. Forget about it. So... Um, the G2 is where it stops for the 44s. I got to hear those. Sounded great, obviously. Um, uh, what else was cool? Um, I knew, oh, Froggy's Fog has a fog gun. So it's a machine gun looking thing that shoots, kind of looks like that Halo, um, the gun you get in Halo, um, the battle rifle, uh, kind of looks like that. And it sits in a wireless rechargeable dock. You pick it up and it shoots like a minute or so of fog. Uh, tank is integrated into the gun itself a uh, couple thousand dollars but very cool um their bubble hazer was also really cool uh another five thousand dollar product um they had a lot of fog sense that was cool uh rasha professional is a lighting company they were there they had a lot of like rick webb lights and other stuff like that um J Maz had really cool stuff and what else pv uh had a uh, little column array system that I think sounded better than in Evolve. So there's a positive note for PV. Um, Yamaha had a really cool booth. Yamaha probably had, I mean, Yamaha takes over the whole ballroom upstairs, which is a massive, you know, full span ballroom. So they had, they had like an actual performance stage with some real artists performing. So that was cool. Um, obviously, Pioneer booth had the, the Omnis, uh, or whatever they call it, had the new Pioneer speaker. Um, got myself a free t-shirt from Pioneer, so that was cool. EV had the best looking lighting setup. Uh, I won't touch on their speakers because I'm not allowed to say bad things. Uh, let's just say they, they're great for some people. Um, let's just leave it at that. I like the ELX. I did like the ELX. The ELX sounded good. I've always liked the ELX series over all their other ones. That sounded very impressive. The ELX um, they, is a wood cabinet, right? I think so, because it's, e, it's ZLX, then EK... No, it's ZLX than ELX. I think it's plastic, actually. Um, yeah, it sounded great, though. Uh, I've heard ELX at a couple banquet centers that have them, and they they sound great. Um, the Everse was cool. They did have like a full water rain shower demo to show like how waterproof it is. So that was cool. Um, other than that, check my note. I think that's that's pretty much it. I think um, that made an impact. Uh, Base Boss had not Base Boss. RCF had a TT demo. Which is like their touring and and uh, touring and theater line is what the TT stands for. Obviously, that's way more expensive than the regular line, but it sounded phenomenal. And, oh yeah, that's designed to cover like ten thousand people at a stadium. Yeah. You know, for Taylor yeah. Swift versus you know us yeah. trying to do a wedding with 60, 70 people. So, mm -hmm. next question I have a couple of th oh, a couple of things from Mike uh, talking about stuff. He said that um, it's upgrade with the faders. And then and um, that loud would never go good at wedding. Ninety nine percent of wedding venues in uh, his area, they have a lot of uh, sound restrictions. Uh, he also is saying, check out the uh, Gator clips on Amazon. Uh, once you get them, you'll never use Velcro ties again. He's very mm -hmm. much a big fan for those. Uh, and anyone see uh, Rick Webb's video on the new controller? Yes, I saw it. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, I don't know if you guys did you guys see Rick Webb's uh take on the controller? I saw bars. 
Yeah, I saw Rick. Did you, uh, Matt? Did you see Rick's uh, video? Yeah, he he asked me. Uh, he tech he um DM'd me or texted me while I was at Nam and asked like, was anybody talking about my video? Cleveland was really pissed about it. I was like, no, nobody's talking about your video. Um, but I heard that he wasn't a wasn't a fan. I mean, I I played with it. I thought it was like, it's a it's a niche item. It's for like if you're on the go and like you have somebody that like has a big YouTube or Spotify collection and wants to just stream Bluetooth mix, you know, cool. It has a, but... it has a market, you know. Yeah. I think it has some cool would... technology and it's the first one to do that stuff. So I, I think it, it kind of gives us an idea where Alpha Theta. Because now we're uh, Pioneer DJs going away, and Alpha Theta is the is the new name to go with. I think that's where Alpha Theta is going to kind of move more toward. And again, they're 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 a leader in the in the market, so they're going to take a look and see what works. And if it works, they're going to continue on making more of them. If it doesn't work, then they'll say, "Okay, fine, great, it doesn't work, we'll do something else." Oh, um, one more one more quick thing. Um, uh, PK Sound, which uh, is. If you know the dubstep producer Excision, uh, he tours with PK Sound. They're owned by a company through North America called ACT. And they debuted a robotic line array. So typically with a line array, you do a, a front and a back hang. The front hang holds the sub and then the, the line array goes under the sub, right? The back hang is what brings it into position after you lock the angles on them. This one has, um, I think they're pistons or something in each box. So that you press a button and it'll array by itself. So uh, it's what they call a robotic line array. And then it also has little baffles that will open up to direct the sound depending on what coverage angle you want. So uh, he did like a live demo while he was while he was speaking where he had the array fully flat and you could hear like how bad it sounded reflected off all the walls. And then the array started to to curve itself and it sounded so good. So. That was really cool. They just did uh, Chris Rock's, I think it was Chris Rock, either Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle, uh, the whole tour. I think it was Chris Rock. And uh, it was all PK sound. So what was, uh, was what, what was the price for that array? Did you see? Oh, they didn't have a price on that. I don't <laughs> Unaffordable. <laughs> um, not, 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 of... not for, again, not for a wedding DJ or for a DJ doing no, uh, course, events, unless you're like doing like, you know, full on concerts. And a lot of that and, stuff, like you need full like audio engineering experience to tune it in and dial it. Like nobody, nobody should be deploying any line array system without like the proper technology behind it. Like they're not made to just plug and play. Um, that's no, what's you cool got about EQ in and stuff. Yeah, you have yeah. To with the EAW system though, that AC6, it does software, but it also can plug and play because everything is hardwired. Like it has a full OLED touchscreen on the back where you can dial in all your settings right through there. Uh, whereas most of the other ones, you have to plug it into Dante or um, uh, Maddie or there's like three different protocols. And that's how you get like control over every box and delays and this. So, um, And that's why everyone has a Cat5 uh, plug on it. So you run that Cat5 and you're running a network through a hub and you're, everything's talking. It's on little inter interwebs. Uh, communicating and that's the uh you know that's that that's a cool technology that uh again we don't need to get into <laughs> I, I don't know about you mr dixon i don't think i don't think you want to get into that technology mm -hmm. or jeff do you want to get into that technology no yeah yeah no yeah nah. no one wants to produce a uh <laughs> start beginning into production of audio like that uh very expensive and again you need to have a lot of understanding and it's a lot of physics which is which is cool and a lot of mathematics but you have to really you know start studying that very hard and you have to adapt very quickly so those sound engineers who do concerts and do uh you know sound for things you know for whoever's touring be it taylor swift or be it uh david chappelle to do all that stuff set everything up and make sure it sounds really good i could give them kudos and say hey you know the, the heck of a job, heck of a job. And that's, that's one of the things. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah. Mike said that they used to be wood and, and they deal with the wood cabinets. So that might be the time that you felt uh, the EKX was uh, not as good as the newer ones. They, they might've gotten rid of the wood cabinet and went to a poly cabinet now. And that may poly cabinets will change the acoustics of a speaker versus a wood cabin i always feel wood cabinets have a little better sound a little richer sound 
than uh, Poly because uh, my JBL PRX has a better, richer sound than the Eons. And the SRX also, uh, it's not just a difference of drivers, it's a difference of cabinet. The SRX has a thicker cabinet than the PRX. And there's a difference in weight between the two. And the SRX always had a little bit more richer sound than the PRX. And the PRX has a, a richer sound than the, the Eons. And that's because not just the drivers, but also the cabinet material. Uh, really quickly, we're going to end with uh, this question. I'm going to go through the room real quickly. If you had a 60-person wedding as reception only in a small room, what would be the uh, speakers you would bring and how many lights would you bring for dance lights? You know, I, I don't even know exactly what you would bring, just how many lights. Like you bring one light, five lights, ten lights, two speakers. Would you bring a sub? Would it be two small speakers, two eights or two tens? Or would you bring two line arrays? So like me, it's always, I do up lighting. I use indirect lighting for dance lights. I got rid of the direct spin and puke lights. And like, I like the, the LD systems, Maui fives. And the Maui fives, I've done weddings up to 130 people with them. And they're a nice, small, low woofer. They're not crazy. They're not in people's face with uh, loudness, but they sound very clear. They're very clean. Um, and that's what I would use, uh, that and some up lights behind me and maybe an up light or two behind the head table. They give you a little light on that side. And I actually got a video up on YouTube of a wedding I did, uh, toward the end of last year that set same scenario. It was 110 people and had up lights across the wall behind me and a couple of lights around the room and a light behind the sweetheart table and, Everyone was having fun and actually people did a train in, in the video. So um, that's what I would do. Jeff, what about you? What would you bring to a small 60, 70 person wedding? Um, well, I would bring my uh, Maui 28 Gen 2s. Uh, they sound great. There's plenty of um, plenty of headroom for 60 people there. Uh, they're white. You know, they match the uh, my setup. It looks good. The lighting. Depending on the venue, I would probably for 60 people, depending on budget, just bring up lights. Uh, probably, you know, I'd probably bring 16. Uh, I've got two sets of eight. So, you know, eight might not cut it. So I'd bring 16, whether I use them all or not, uh, depending on, you know, what the venue looks like and and space. Um, but that's probably all I would do. If, if they wanted a little bit more on the dance floor and they wanted to pay a few extra bucks, I would bring, you know, just my two small moving heads and put them on the totems. Uh, or I would bring, uh, probably wouldn't bring it, but the, the other option would be bringing the, um, um, uh, my, my watch, my watch effects and putting them on totems. So, but I'd keep it simple for 60 people. It's not that big. If it's just a standard dance floor up lights, probably going to be fine. Okay. Oh, Mr. Dixon, what about you? What would you bring? Would you use your Harbinger uh, line arrays? Would you? Yeah, most you... definitely. Yeah, I'll bring both of them. And if, if, if it's a case where I don't need to um, put both up, I'll use one. And then on the side of my um, line array speakers, I have one of these like um, generic um, color bar. Um, things that I have magnets that can like stick right to the side of the um the light. So I'll probably bring both of them so two of them can be on the on dance floor. Then I have those jam um glow sticks that I can put right in front of my my um booth. And also I got those lights that I got that I probably have I haven't used yet. So I'll probably stick it on there too. So that's the light up the dance floor and got a lot of stuff going in a small spot. Okay. And then, uh, Matt, I'm going to answer you, ask you in one second, but uh, I got a question here. Uh, do you charge the same for a 60 person wedding as 120? For me, no. I actually have a package, our bronze package, it's for 80 persons or less. And then it goes into my silver package, which is up to 130. So, from eight, for basically 81 people to 130, it's silver. It's a $200 difference because the amount of people means how much work you're going to do, requests, dealing with people, so forth and so on. So we do have a smaller package, and then we have a silver package. Then we go into our, our more expensive packages, which offer more and more. Like, you know, we go into our gold and our platinum. That is the bigger speakers, 
So that is, you know, a little more expensive. But again, the amount of people to me is not just absorbing sound and how much speaker you need, but how much you have to deal with requests, questions, if you lighting, what you're doing, more people equals more work. So again, I'm going to charge a little bit more for that, but there is a difference for me between the two. Um, Matt, what about you? What would you do for a 60 person wedding? Would you bring a 18 and a couple of your, uh, couple of your RCF uh, line arrays or what would you do? Uh, of course, uh, 60 people you say. Yep. Um, so that's the thing that I was thinking of recently. I don't have a small system anymore. Um, so I don't like all of my stuff can cover two, 300 people easily. Um, so I, that's like, if anything, I know this sounds crazy cause I, I never, well, I've never talked bad on it, but, uh, I might consider those 28 G3s. Um, I, uh, the company that I got my HKs from has like demo units from NAM and I'm waiting on the pricing, but if the price is good enough, like I just don't have a small system. Um, I guess I could bring like my two 12 inch HKs, but they don't really have like they have punchy base, but they don't have like deep enough base. So uh, what I would do now for that small of a party, I just did one this weekend was two of my IG 4T, my white column speakers with a single 18 sub. And that combo sounds really great. But again, that's, that's a lot, but I don't know. I don't have a small system. So, uh, but like I said, I did hear the art nine fifteens, and they did have a ton of base just by themselves. So I might just get those for to speak, Two speakers, no sub type situation, but I don't know. Well, if you if you did something like a um, uh, someone's doing a presentation, they, they want a little music beginning and they want to do speech, a system like that with those two uh, R12s would be perfect for that. You have a little bass for the music, but have enough low end that voice sounds good and have the overall great sound and that throw you can cover 100 people or 50 people or 75 people but also cover a, you know, 60, 70 person wedding. Um, Jeff, do you charge less for 60 person than 120? Um, usually that's going to be about the same price. Uh, if it's up to 200, it's where I go up. Or okay. I'm sorry, 175. If it's up 175 up to 200 or over, then I go up a little bit. Okay. Mr. Dixon, what about you? Is, is you have a 60 person package or... Or do you, everything is one price? Yeah, I, mine is pretty much one price. It's my my um package is put together more so of uh, depending on the amount of work I have to do. So since it's not that many people, I probably wouldn't have to do that much. So there'll probably be a lower package. But yeah, my package just pretty much stay the same. But there's a difference between like um. A wet my wedding setup um prices and then my private like smaller um prices. So I'll probably go with the more of the private um packages, the three packages, as opposed to doing the high end wedding one. But we'll try to find a, a middle. But basically, my package is pretty much the same. It's not based on the number of people. It's just amount uh, how much equipment I have to bring. Well, that also you know for me when I look at people that that's how much equipment. You know, more lights, more this, more that. Plus people asking requests, people, you know, doing stuff, you know, um, dealing with people, how big is your wedding party? Those are the things we look at because, again, the bigger the wedding party, the more work there is for Tracy to deal with, you know, make sure everything's lined up correctly, air inductions. And it's like anything, you know, how elaborate is it? Is it one room? Is it multiple rooms? You know, uh, we get into some wedding, some guys, sure you guys run into it is in multiple rooms. So you have a wedding in one room, cocktail in another room, dinner in a third room, and a reception in a fourth room. And having enough gear to go between there, that's one thing that we have. And, you know, it, that's that's always, you know, it's like time and material. What does it cost? Well, you want to have four rooms, you're going to pay a four-room price. You know, you may have 60 people, but, you know, there's different separate steps for each one, and that's going to be an additional price, you know. Is is the wedding there on site? Is the wedding off site? Is it somewhere else? Hours ahead. Well, there's a charge for that. So, it's it's like anything else. You always got to look at what's best. You know, what's the, what's the best to charge for, and um, you know what work is going into it. Matt, do you have a small person package, a sixty person wedding package? I just said I don't. <laughs> um, well, you're not for sound, but for pricing. You. 
No, it's price. The price is the price. The price is the price. It doesn't matter how many people. Um, okay. I, I tell people like the higher up you go is bigger production, but um, like I don't charge people based on the, it's, eh, it's not true. I mean, we don't bring our big system if it's less than like a $3,500 wedding. So if you're paying more than 3,500, I don't mind spending an extra 15, 20 bucks to get a U-Haul trailer to bring the big system. Cause I also like DJing on the big system. And I think you need dual 21s at a wedding just cause it sounds so much better. Um, like I want people to feel that bass and you just don't get that with a single 18. So, um, but I don't, I, I don't really, like I said, that's, that's the only thing audio wise, like I'm looking at right now. Cause I mean, those Meyer speakers, yes, I would love them, but 11 grand for a pair is a little out of what I want to drop right now, but potentially targeting middle of middle to next year. Um, and then I also want to get a custom DJ booth, like, a like what, um, like a TV style booth, not like what you guys have, but like the integrated wooden one that low stacks and those guys have. So I've got a guy that can build it. That's a $2,500 investment, but uh, I think that's needed. And then my buddy's well, going to build me a I do know DJ, DJ Brantley, he does have that Toadmatic booth. He loves I don't like the Toad ones. I don't like the Toad ones. I'm just saying he has that. Yeah. It's all integrated. He loves it. Roll stuff yeah. in, rolls it out, done or over with. Yeah, I, I like the, the more like... <laughs> modern clean white wooden look um and it'd be cheaper than the toad booth so well the, the other part is also you gotta paint them so <laughs> yeah um mike said he'll be never never able to be play a dual 21 uh he would wind up in jail <laughs> where he's at yeah, so. I mean, we I, I think it's where he is like out here they have venues that have full concert level production uh for weddings because People have the money and that's just, it's LA. It's different Orange area, County. different market, different way of doing things. And yeah. that's the thing is that I want to thank you guys all for watching tonight. If you're here tonight, thank you so much for coming in and watching the show. And we'll have back to our normal amount of uh, people next week. Other than that, make sure you keep everything safe, keep dry, enjoy the beautiful uh, winter weather. I know uh, some areas are a little bit warmer than normal, but uh, as always uh, be safe. And for tonight, I'm going to have uh, Jeff take us out. Jeff, why don't you take us out tonight? All right, guys. Keep them spinning. See you next time. Thank you so much, guys.